So in this video, I want to look at adding algebraic fractions. And before we go into that, I just want to go back to adding normal fractions just to make sure that we've got the method sorted. Now, the whole idea for adding fractions is to make the denominators the same. Because once you have something like um, 2 ninths plus 3 ninths, you know that you've got 5 ninths altogether. So you can combine the fractions once the denominators are the same. And that works um, with algebraic fractions as well. It's the same concept. And that's where we get the whole idea of cross-multiplication from. So allowing us to um, multiply the 3 by the 7, the 2 by the 5, and the 5 by the 7. This cross-multiplication method uh, works because it is trying to make sure that you have the same common denominator. So you are multiplying both the 3 and the 5 by 7. So you get 21 over 35, and you're multiplying the, the 2 and the 7 by the 5, because then you've got the same common denominator allowing you to add the numerators together. So 31 over 35. This is the cross-multiplication method, and this works for algebraic fractions as well. So when we get on to something like number 2, where I've just put an x as a multiplier in the denominators, it's exactly the same idea. You can multiply the 3 uh, by 7x and the 5x by 7x, so 21x over 35x squared plus 5x times 2, 5x times 7x, 10x over 35 x squared. So now that you've got the same denominator, you can, you can add the numerators, so 31x over 35x squared, and then you can cancel an x from the numerator denominator in this example, so you get 31 over 35x. Okay, now of course you didn't need to necessarily multiply both um, top and bottom with the x as well. You could have just multiplied uh, the top by 7, the bottom by 7, the top by 5, and the bottom by 5, because x was already a common factor. Okay, So if you can spot that there's already a common factor involved, then you don't need to make your life more complicated. Okay, So if we uh, approach number 3, then we can use the cross-multiplication method. Now, there's no common factors between x plus 1 and x minus 2, so there's no quicker way to do it like there would have been in question 2. What we can do is we can multiply top and bottom by the x minus 2, so 4 lots of x minus 2 over x plus 1 x minus 2. Now, I wouldn't bother expanding brackets at this point, OK? Just leave it alone. And then multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 1 for the second fraction. So 3 lots of x plus 1 over x plus 1, x minus 2. So now that you've got the same denominator, you can bring the numerators together. So at this point, I would probably expand the brackets. So I'm not going to expand the denominators, OK? I'll show you why. But I will expand the numerators, because I know I can then group like terms and simplify. So I'll have 4x take away 8. And then we've got take away 3x plus 1. So take away 3x and take away 3 times 1, all over x plus 1, x minus 2. Now, why would I expand the denominator if it's already neatly factorised? Unless I absolutely had to, it makes more sense to keep it neat. OK? So don't unnecessarily factorise, uh, unnecessarily expand brackets everywhere, OK, just because you can. Now, the numerator can be simplified because we've got 4x take away 3x, so just x. Minus 8 take away 3 is minus 11. So we've got x take away 11 over x plus 1, x minus 2. Okay, 
But it's nice and neat, and that's my finished answer. Now, for number four, we can use a very similar method. Okay? So now it's really just getting down to practice. So we're going to multiply 4x plus 3 by 5x plus 2. So if you can do this with um, straight off the cuff, like with, uh, without writing it all down like I've done there, then all the better. Okay, So I'm going to go straight in with expanding them as well. So 4x plus 3 times 5x plus 2. So 20x squared plus, well, we're going to have an 8x and a 15x. So that's 23x. And we have 2 times 3, so 6. So that's over the 3x minus 5 times 4x plus 3. Okay. Now the denominator doesn't need to be expanded. The numerator, however, it makes sense to in order to combine what's coming in the next fraction. So we're going to have 3x minus 5 times 2x minus 1. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. We've got 3x times minus 1, so minus 3x minus 10x and minus 13x and then minus 5 times minus 1 is plus 5 all over the 3x minus 5 4x plus 3 so now that we've got a common denominator we can combine the numerators 20x squared plus 6x squared is 26x squared we've got 23x take away 13x so 10x and 6 plus 5 is 11. All over 3x minus 5, 4x plus 3. OK? And that's as best as I can do. Now, perhaps the numerator factorises in a case like this, OK? I'm not really too worried unless I absolutely had to, OK? Right, and so for the last one. Now, as I said with this example up here, we had a common denominator, um, or a common factor in the denominators, which was the x. Now, if I just look at the two first fractions, I can see that there is a common factor in the denominators, and that's the 3x plus 1. So, what I can do is in order to just combine those two fractions, and it makes sense to just combine the first two and then add on the third, OK? So to combine those two, I could multiply this fraction top and bottom by 3x plus 1, and then I've got the same denominator. So I would have two lots of 3x plus 1, so 6x plus 2, over 3x plus 1 squared plus 5 over 3x plus 1 squared plus the 4 over x minus 3. So we can combine those two now because we've got the same denominator. So we'll have 6x plus 7 over 3x plus 1 squared plus 4 over x minus 3. So we've reduced the problem down to this. Now, in the denominators, we don't have a common factor. So I'm going to have to just go straight in with cross-multiplication. So what we're going to want to do is multiply top and bottom by x minus 3. So if I multiply the numerator by x minus 3, I'm going to get 6x squared. So that's the x times 6x. I'm going to get a 7x and a minus 18x, which gives me a minus 11x. And then a minus 3 times a 7 is a minus 21. All over 3x plus 1 squared uh, times x minus 3. So that's the denominator. Now for the numerator, over here, right, because we're going to multiply top and bottom here by the 3x plus 1 squared. So we're going to have four lots of 3x plus 1 squared. Now, do I feel brave about expanding that all at the same time? Let's go with it. Let's try it. 
3x times 3x is 9x squared. 9x squared times 4 is 36x squared. We're going to get a 6x times 4 is 24x. And we're going to get a 1 times 4 is 4. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And then we've got the denominator of 3x plus 1 squared, x minus 3. So now that we've got the same denominator, we can combine the two fractions. So 6x squared and 36x squared is 42x squared. We've got minus 11x plus 24x is 13x. And minus 21 plus 4 is minus 17. All over 3x plus 1 squared x minus 3. OK? And that is uh, the answer for number 5 when you combined all of those three fractions together. OK? So this is how we add and subtract algebraic fractions.